uh, full of information for you all. We have our UPHS team on the Zoom this morning, our executive director, our administrative coordinator, and Justin is also here, but will be silent, our membership and marketing coordinator. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We have with us today, Jen Powell, who is the CEO and founder of Jen Powell's Photography. Um, she's also a new uh, potential UPHS member and a friend of the sector. Um, she's worked in human services for many years and done a plethora of things. And so we're super excited to have her. And without further ado, we're going to turn it over to Jen. Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I Before I start, LaShawn, the, how will I do my PowerPoint on my computer? Are you going to give that? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. The photographers don't know all things about electronics. It's it's the truth. Um, so I'm Jennifer Powell. I am from Tallahassee. I've lived here a very long time. I say that I'm like the sweet and spicy mix because my dad is from Philly. So I lived upstate when I was a kid and moved back to Tallahassee. So I call this my home. It's where I've raised my two babies. I still will always call them babies, even though one is going to be at TCC this year. And I have an eighth grader. Um, and I've been doing photography for almost 17 years. I was in school for radiology, actually. And I say when I speak to entrepreneurs and at FSU, it kind of I am still a photographer. I always wanted to do type of imaging, but I really love the creative side and empowering businesses and people that they all can be photogenic behind the camera, that they all have confidence and they all have what it takes to translate that through the lens. So I've been doing it a long time from weddings to babies to families and headshots and branding. But today we're going to talk about branding because that's really has been like a shift in the industry um, I opened up a 3,000 square foot studio right there on Capitol Circle. I'm sure you know where Momentum is and Skate World, and I'm like smashed in between the two. And so it's fantastic. It's like a one-stop shop, hair, makeup, clothes. We do all of it for you right there. So we take all the thinking out of the pain in the butt part of getting ready. I know as women, right, like to, to get ready to, for a photo shoot, I'm like, my kids always look great but I don't want to have to think about all the things. And so we kind of took all of the really hardships out of photography and built it all in one space. So I'm super excited to get on here today and talk about that. Um, LaShawn, if you'll do your thing, I'm working off two things. So if I'm looking <laughs> up and down. <laughs> oh, boom. All right. So you present that. Is that big screen on yours now? Oh, okay. Is that full screen now? It should be. My phone might look different than my... Can everybody see that? We can. Can you click like the from the beginning slideshow option? Mm -hmm. There you go. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. So why is branding photography so important? Um, you know, as LaShawn said, I also served in the nonprofit sector and I was the executive director for Girls on the Run for a long time. And I know that when you guys are doing strategic planning, you place all of this, um, you're building out all these important pieces of why your industry is important, what you do is important, who you serve, how you're going to serve them. And this sometimes is a missing piece in small business, big business, corporate, and in um, nonprofit, because photography is super important in translating the story and the message through imagery. And we have found this, you obviously see the million different platforms we have now to keep up with, you know, LinkedIn and Snapchat and TikTok, and I'm not embracing all of them. I don't think that you have to focus on all of them, but it is super important to be able to have the imagery to match your message. And so, 
as part of branding photography, it's a process. It ta- it's not something that you just jump into the studio. It's not a headshot. And we'll kind of go over that because people will email me and say, I want to do some branding photography and what they really mean as a headshot. And so we'll explain the difference in the two and why the story, the strategy, and the success of um, branding photography is so important in your business. So the story, I challenge you, if you have not done this, which I'm sure you have if you've worked with UPHS because they're phenomenal, um, what is the story behind who you serve and why you serve? It's going to be part of the imagery when you're building your brand content, you're building the brand photography to match the message, you're going to really pair those two together and that's how you will be able to translate it. People are visual. They want to see powerful images, clean, crisp, bright that translate the message because most people you have like seconds to be able to capture them. And if you don't have that imagery, you lose them right away. Um, Strategy, I'm I'm a big dreamer, but I believe that planning is a really big important part of being successful in any industry that you're in. So a dream without a plan is just a wish, right? So if we have the imagery and we have all of the content to back our story and our why and who we serve, and put the strategy behind it, um, we're bound for success. And the success, success is not what you have, but who you are. And I'm a firm believer in that a lot of times people think branding photography is just about the service and what we do, but really people connect with people. And UPHS is a phenomenal example of it. Everybody knows them, right? They always make a presence. They're always connecting with people because relationships are important. So you're a huge part of the success in that and a huge part of the story behind who you serve. Click. Boom. So what is branding photography? I get this all of the time. They're like, I don't really understand it. I just sell a product. Um, I just serve in my community. I just do girls on the run or whatever um, organization that you do. Branding photography is really a collection of images. So when we sit down and we plan out your branding session, I provide all of my clients a questionnaire. We go deep and people love this. They're like, wow, I never thought of these questions. Who you are? What are your colors? What is your why? Who do you look up to? Who are your competitors? Where is their funding coming from? This is all research that goes into branding photography because the the idea is to aim the images to visually match your brand story. And every organization, business, personal brand has a story. So that can be with you, models, props, um, different backdrops, different sets. My studio has a lot of it where we build out it customized to the client to represent the brand. So we base that off the questionnaire. But all of this imagery um, can be on site as well. So branding photography is more of like a lifestyle shoot, if that makes sense. Next. Perfect. So, and I'm sure you know this, that 80% of consumers trust a company and 77% more likely to buy from a company or, or buy into a company if the founder uses social media. It's so true. People want to hear the story behind the why. Why did you start? Who is the founder in the organization? Who is the person that came up with the vision? And then you build the team of people to support that and to go out and tell the story. And they're also part of those brand images. Um, A lot of people are like, I don't want to be in the pictures. You got to get over it. (laughs) You don't have to be in every picture, but it's really, really important to show diversity in the images of the people that they're going to be working with or communicating with. And then also telling the story of all of the product or the people that you serve. Um, I I say that's kind of my superpower. And if I've photographed you before, people that don't like to have their pictures made walk away feeling really fantastic about themselves because I love the story behind um, photography and people's businesses. And I think when you really get them into what they love and telling the story behind why they do what they do, that translates through the camera. So it's not you just standing in front of a backdrop and smiling and showing your product. It's really us having a conversation about, tell me why you do what you do and your eyes change and your face changes and you start to get in comfortable space where you feel the most powerful and where you can really show people your superpower. And it's the photographer's job to be able to capture that. So branding photography really tells that and allows people to connect with that whole story. Yes, ma'am. 
Eh, this is um, and that's spelled wrong. So it's not called he shots. It's called headshots. But uh, <laughs> branding people all the time get it confused. So headshots are from the waist up. And that is really uh, super important. It's part of our branding packages. You get headshots as well. But headshots are just a professional look into your team, who you are, you know, and, and introducing those players that they're going to work with. Branding kind of shows the story through the imagery, right? So you're still going to have your headshots. Then we're going to bring in the elements that make sense to your brand. What colors do you use? What do you do? Who do you serve? What kind of materials do we want to add in that are customized to you? I I have um, an artist this week coming in. So Shoei's going to be painting on site and we're going to have all the paint and the brushes and talk about the planning process. So it's really neat to see the difference and why they're both really important. Headshot sessions are just headshots. Headshot and branding always in one. So when you do a branding session, you get headshots as well. Branding photography. So I challenge people when they're right, their strategic planning. Photography is not, is an expense and it's something that you have to plan for and map out just like you map out your programs, um, your events for the year. Photography is the exact same thing. A lot of my clients do quarterly updates and that way you're constantly staying fresh and you're sharing the images um, and because programs evolve and how we do that. So when we're doing quarterly sessions, we're building out the beginning stage, how it's evolving through the season of the year and what you're really trying to get across. Um, we're trying to create a positive first impression, right? When you look at a website and you see that it's professional and you've got people that you're gonna be working with that you're asking money for, or you want to bring your program into their schools or into the community, when you have the imagery that looks professional, people take you seriously. Um, so what type of mood are we wanting to portray in the images is something that we, we talk about um, that helps increase your views for your content. It's really interesting. I know social media is a whole nother beast. Um, I had to get help because I feel like it's a generational change that I'm not fully, <laughs> fully knowledgeable on all things. So hire the people that know the best, um, but it helps with your content views. And that's really interesting to watch how things change and who is looking at it. What is the age demographic? What are people really connecting to? Is it reels and videos? Is it the images that we um, built out to tell the story through the reels and then reusing the content over and over again. Um, making your product more memorable. I can't tell you how many people hire me and there's probably some people on this call that I've done some branding shoots for that say, you know, I connected to you on your website. I feel like you were talking to me. And that's the goal for everyone's website, right? You want people to look at the website and say, this is the person that I want to work with. I feel like the words that she's saying is who I am. Um, and so you make that memorable connection with the company and it really increases your brand awareness as an industry leader, but then also um, to the community. Building a personal brand is the same thing. People ask all the time. So how do I differentiate the brand of who I am into my company? And I always say it's like a trickle effect. People like story, right? They like that they know that you have kids and that you serve in the community. So even in my content as a photographer, I share that part of me because people that serve and that really want to be in the nonprofit sector, they connect with that, right? Or people that I serve with in my daughter's dance and my son's crew, those are like the athletic people. People want to start to see a side of you too. So I think it's always important to tell the story of the people that work for you. Um, they're not just employees, they're human beings that have a reason why you picked them. And I think sharing that about who they are and a little personal touch goes a really long way for people to connect with. And then um, brand photos are also a way to show your product to the real world in real world situations. So I think it's really important if you are, if you have a product or you have a service to bring in the people in those images that are gonna tell that story. It doesn't always have to be an image of a person holding a product. It can be the person in real life. It can be the people that you're serving in one of your programs and you've got kids laughing um, in the images with you. So constantly telling the story. So customers buy in, clients buy in, and also your, um, your supporters buy in.
how to use it. Again, it can be used a million different ways. I have been using the same images for a very long time. You can reuse them over and over again. Social media, blog posts, website, ads, emails, press kits. So you get a lot of longevity out of your shoots. Um, um, also, when you are doing your branding photography, we're thinking about how you're going to use them. So I ask a lot of questions during my shoots about how are we going to do this? What do you do? Who is your client? You know, this is a really good idea. If you point here, you can talk about the new program that's launching. Um, so once I have all the build out of the content that you guys are going to be using and what we need to do, then we build a list about how we're going to use it and how we're going to engage with it. Brand it like it's hot. Yep. Um, so I really think it's important to, I think this is like a whole team of people that you can help. It's such a creative, fun thing to dive into the research of who your target market is and your competitors. What is your personality and your focus? What's really going to separate you from people that maybe serve um, in the same space that you serve? What are your slogans and taglines? Really looking at brand and colors. If you haven't done that, I can tell by looking at a website what people's brand and colors like UPHS is very consistent, right? You want to have consistency. You can't be popping like hot pink and purple up into your images if that's not your brand. It's okay in a social media post to have people that are in an event, um, but you really want to stay consistent. And the reason why is when people see your images, they know who it is right off without even reading anything. Um, and it's really, really valuable. So thinking about your what, your why, who do you serve, and what is your elevator pitch? This all is going to be translated through images. Um, and really, like this image, for instance, people know that I am like a cheerleader for all. Like, get it, girl. I got your back. I want to be um, your biggest fan. And so making sure that you translate that through all of your images is the goal. Next, ma'am. These are things, and LaShawn can send this out. Um, I, I'm sure you've been in classes before that you've heard about what successful business is, how they think. I really built my business backwards, just like I feel like most successful um, organizations and industries have. You know, what is my why? What, what feeds my soul? What fills my cup? Ooh, ooh, let me, what, um, let me fix that. There we go. What really brings me joy and what is my story and how that, how can my talents connect with that? And so that's really why I fell in love with photography. Um, I fell in love with serving my community was because it really realized it was all the same thing. I wanted to empower people to be great, right? I, I knew that I had special talents that I could serve other people like me, that every person has been, you know, has been given gifts that they're supposed to serve the world. And I get to do that in different capacities. I get to do that with nonprofit. And then I also get to do that with photography. I want people to walk out of my studio saying, that was not only the best pictures that I've ever taken of myself, but I feel like I'm ready to take on the world and in my industry. And really, so that's why I built my business. So I challenge you when you're thinking about that in yours is to think about your why, then your what, and then your how. I'm a big believer in jump, you know, like obviously have a plan, but sometimes the how, how you're going to do it, you just navigate it as you go, you know, opening a 3,000 square foot studio for branding was a big jump, right? And, and investing in all of these things to be able to share with the community was a big jump. I knew I'd figure out how along the way, and it's been super successful. So I say your why is your number one move. That's how you build your content. And it's a huge part of, of the piece of how we translate that message. Your story. Oh, I love, love this woman. And I'm sure all of you know her. Um, gosh, she wears a lot of hats, like most of us. She serves in so many different capacities. So when we talked about her story, um, you know, and her identity, we had to translate that through a bunch of different messages. So when you really know your story and who you are, the professional images just tell that. And it's easy to translate it when you have a clear outline of who you are. And in the questions um, that I send my clients, that's part of it. Like, I want to hear your story. Why did you open up 
the nonprofit that you did. And there's always a story behind everyone's why. And so crafting the story through imagery is a huge part, part of it. So if you haven't de defined your story yet, it's definitely something that you need to tap into. What is the vision for your life and business? Um, you know, all of these are questions. So my branding um, questionnaire is four pages long. And I always say, don't overthink it. Just write your first thoughts down because when you you've opened this you're down the road or even if you're just getting started these pieces will evolve over time um but like where are you today so you know what do you want to do and who are you um i knew that i wanted to serve in some capacity but not not to be famous but to be able to serve others so using my talents and knowledge to serve the world and i believe that's why most people start their business believing in what you do you know people are going to doubt you along the way um, but having the support that you need and building the strategy of how you're going to do that is a beautiful story to tell through imagery as well. And living out your vision will be hard, but I believe that if you, um, if you really believe in it and, and you're willing to work for it and you have all the pieces and the, the talents behind you, you can definitely handle it. So brand board. I don't know if anyone um, on here has done a brand board. I have one for my business when I was building out my website. Um, a lot of times when you're first getting started, you're using a template to build your website, which is totally fine. Um, I knew three years ago that I wanted to build my website to tap into my ideal client and perfectly describe age demographic, what she did, who she was, who, how they did it. And so having a brand board will keep you in line on your social media as well as your website. There's something that very easy that you can do. I do them for my clients as well as like Etsy and those places that you could start playing with things. But this is really a template. So if your images don't align with that, then that's where you get off. So having a brand board is super beneficial has your logo, your fonts that you're going to use. Um, so you have consistency because consistency is how people are going to identify you in the industry and separate you from your competition. Brand content list and then find your photographer. So now you've decided that you wanted to do headshots or you've done them before and you want to step into the branding um, photography world. And then that's where you really find the photographer that fits you. I, there's a lot of talented photographers. I always feel like, you know, you pick the right one that matches your energy and what you're trying to get across. Um, and then you build your content list with your photographer. So that's part of a free service that I do with my clients, having that conversation, building out the content list, and then being realistic if, if that's something that we can get in one session or if that's something that would be ideal over time. Um, branding sessions take a lot longer than headshot sessions. So a headshot session, you know, would take 15 to 30 minutes uh, max. And then a branding session can be up to five outfit changes. So you're changing locations, you're going down a list and planning. So that can take up to four hours of doing a branding shoot. So it's definitely something that you're, you know, you plan to invest in, you want to take time planning. And you want to find the right photographer that's going to help you plan out and really understand your vision and can execute it. And then I say to everyone, whatever you do, be consistent. You know, in the social media and the branding world, it's a whole nother job um, and one that takes a lot of detail and time. So whatever you do, once you've planned your colors and you've planned out your content for the month, I always suggest doing a month out. It's, it's much easier. It will take a headache off of you if you're not doing it on the fly. And that's how you'll get that consistency. Um, if you have this planned out, be consistent. If you're going to post three times a week, you post three times a week. If you're going to update your blog two times a week, you always do two times a week. That way people expect it. And they know that you're constantly invested in your business. When you're invested in your business, then people will invest in you. And so I know that it can be overwhelming. There's amazing talents out there that want to learn. I have a girl from FSU that's phenomenal that really helped me um, 
kind of help me build out that content, even though it's what I do, I need someone to execute it. And so being consistent, having the imagery to match it, make sure your colors match. So no matter what you put up, people are like, oh yeah, that's her. I know her. I know what she does. I know who she serves. Um, so not bouncing all over the place and having a plan is a huge part of branding photography. This is just, I added in here because I wanted to show people we're having a, um, I, I understand nonprofit, let me go back. I understand nonprofit and tight budgets and understand that it's a huge investment to invest in imagery for um, your company, especially if you have more people, you have more than two and three, can get expensive. Um, I know that LaShawn and um, Justin and Amber put out a newsletter that I'm doing a huge, amazing, I think, deal for everyone to get your company started, to get you set up on the right foot for the new um, season where we're doing, it's $150. That will give you full body and headshots and some imagery to go with it, which is huge. It's a significantly less than what I normally charge, but I understand that when you have tight budgets, sometimes it's not the top of the list and, and your community is at the top. So I wanted to show you this because a lot of these clients came in at separate times. The cool part about um, doing that and doing them on a transparent backdrop is that you can build out very easily on Canva. I promise, I would not tell you if it's easy, easy if it's not easy. You can build out your team photos and people can pop in at any time. So all of these images were took it, taken at different times and teams built from them. I put this on here and, and the reason why is because a lot of people don't wanna get in front of the camera. And I can tell you that I'm an introvert, um, believe it or not. And all of the things on this picture made my business and who I am and who I serve grow. Um, so jumping in and being a nonprofit when I literally didn't think that I was the girl, God wanted me to be the girl. And so I did. And I learned so much about myself serving girls and being a voice for them, you know, serving my state. I am not a girly girl, believe it or not. I never wore high heels before I did it. But doing those things took me out of my comfort zone and it made me a stronger leader in my um, industry. As a photographer, I got to understand what it meant to be insecure or I meant what it meant to be um, on the other side of the camera. When people say I don't feel comfortable, I understand what uncomfortable is. And so now I know how that feels for my client and knowing how to pose them and uh, make them feel safe in a space. And so I show this because everything that I've ever done that was out of my comfort zone led to success in my business. So sometimes being uncomfortable on the camera can really change the course of your industry and your company and really help it grow. And I'm just a Scorpio and, and really deep. So I always like to leave with um, success life lessons. I'm a firm believer um, that success brand is not one that has not seen hardship, but one that has seen it all, the good, the bad, the loss, the profit, the criticism. But in the end, they sail through everything. And that is so true. You know, there will be seasons um, in nonprofit and in businesses that are tough. But when you're constantly staying ahead of the game and saying, you know, it's tough, I'm supposed to grow through this and constantly being ahead of the industry and thinking outside the box, that's really what separates you from the rest. So thinking through this season, how can we do things a little different? How can we stand out from the people that we're you know, fighting dollars for or that we're trying to compete in some capacity um, for? It's really important to stay ahead of the game. And this is my why. So I always end with my people. Um, these are the people that help me grow as a leader. They're why I get up every single day, showing gratitude, having the right attitude, um, staying healthy. And, and I challenge all of you to make sure that that's a priority in your life because they really are the backbone and the support of, um, I believe, why we do what we do. And so these are my peoples. And then I think we have one more slide. Inspire and brand and build your brand image. 
if you're authentic self, you have no competition. And that's so true. You know, when I say competitive, competitive is a part of every industry, um, but it's really important that you're your authentic self because everyone connects with someone different. So really there is no competition if you're bringing your authentic self, your authentic brand, um, and that's really what's going to separate you from everyone. And and not everyone is going to be your cup of tea and that's okay. You know, they come back around. So I'm excited for all of you. I hope that you'll jump into, um, if you're looking for photos, at least come give me a call and chat with me. But really, if not, there's amazing people out there that can help you um, start branding photography and at least get your headshots done this year. It's really important to have some professional headshots. If you want to be professional, you have to look professional. So. Well, thank you, Jen. I actually learned a lot, a lot. Got my little notebook over here and me and a couple members were kind of texting back and forth. Need to get <laughs> ourselves together. Um, but I did want to open the floor for questions. I know we have a melting pot on the call today, which I love it. Um, some seasoned nonprofits, but we have a lot of new nonprofits. Um, but I wanted to see that anybody have any questions because I, I have a couple that I think will be helpful to everyone. Any questions? Yeah, ask away. I have a question. Yeah. Um, hi. Um, so I'm curious how the branding, um, I know that you mentioned, uh, I guess, a lot more engagement with photos on articles. I've seen that you get a lot more engagement too with like reels or videos. Mm -hmm. How does that kind of, I guess, work with branding um, the way you create the reels or do you usually use the same template or what, what's your thought on, I guess, videos? So I will tell you some of the templates are challenging. Um, it, especially if you're using like Instagram or Facebook, there's strategic behind why they do what they do too. So they're going to drive your reel faster by using their templates. They want you to use their templates. We use, if you look on and you can click onto Instagram and see the reels that I use um, when I'm kind of telling the story of why branding is important. We use all the imagery. Even if you're doing a reel that you're going to use from your event, you still want the cover of your Instagram reel to be a professional shot, right? So like the first thing that they see is a cover of professional, like, oh, what's that? And then the, the video can be completely different. It's that eye-catching professional image in the front. But yes, reels, I would say that you need to have probably two to three reels up a week. It shifts though. So that's why I hired a girl that knows the industry is... They're, sometimes they're driving photos, sometimes they're driving reels, and you kind of just have to see what mm -hmm. they're doing at that time. But reels are super important, and branding photography can do that. Go check out my Instagram, and you can see how we've done that. Okay. And then another question I have is, um, so at the nonprofit, um, I work at Oasis, and they're for women and girls. We have a mm -hmm. lot of different events. Uh, a lot of the times, we like to, um, I guess, promote what's been, you know, what's been going on, whether it's camp. It's not really every day that we're going to have a, someone really doing photography with like a nice camera or anything, um, but we do like to post a lot and have like those photos out there. So any tips or tricks on how to make it look, I guess, more catching or more aligned with the brand if it's just like an iPhone photo? Yes. And iPhone photos are fine. You know, you have to have real life events. Someone can't have a professional photographer at every event. But when you have your branding photography that has images that you can use as a cover for that to the start of it, like look at camp and it's your team that's saying, yeah, and you got confetti going or whatever it is that you're trying to have the message. People see that, right? People see that image and then they're like, okay, what is she talking about? Words are really powerful. I I think she posted one yesterday of that. I have a girl that's going, yes. And it's like telling the story through fingers and pointing. And that's all done on a transparent backdrop. And we have props and everything that could do that. But I think if you have the imagery telling the story of what your program does, you will stay in brand alignment. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I see Royal is unmuted. Royal, did you have a question or are you just happen to be unmuted? <laughs> he probably multitasking yeah um, world. so i have a question um for newer nonprofits, you you kind of talked a lot about you know it's a strategy um when getting that website started sometimes we can do too much so oh, yeah 
many, um, you know, in terms of, of photos and content, like what's a good number for getting that website started? So I say, keep it simple. Um, we are starting a pageant here in Tallahassee and I, a leadership group. And I would say on that website, there's probably eight images, literally. Um, they're big. And so that they're really loud and predominant and clear, but you don't want to put pictures up on your website that are grainy and blurry and it, no. So I say less is more. Um, that is always something that you can grow with and grow through. So I would not put so much emphasis on doing it all at one time, especially if you're getting started, that's going to change very quickly throughout the year with things that are going to happen and go on. So I would say if you have a good 10 shots and then you have your team pictures, that that's a good start for a website. And I, you've mentioned team pictures a lot. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, we really, we really, really big on team. And so can you mm -hmm. kind of share a little bit about why that's important? Because I think sometimes, you know, we go to drop down and it's like about, and then the team isn't there. And so um, can you talk a little bit about why that's important in terms of branding? I'm a firm believer in any industry that you work with people that you want to work with, right? Like there's a lot of people that do the same thing and a lot of people that do the same thing really well. So how can you be different? And I'm a firm believer, number one, you have to be authentic and real and, and support your community. I use you, LaShawn, as an example. I mean, rock star. People want to work with UPHS because of the team behind them, right? They serve the people, they show up when they say they're going to, and they have the professionalism behind that. So if you want to stand out from another nonprofit that doesn't mean that they won't get there, but that is you're fighting for the same dollars in the same program space because there's a lot of similar programs out there. Having the team behind them sharing their story, they have a lot of different avenues that they connect with. There's a, there's a reason why people strategically pick their team, right? You want diversity, um, different sectors of like friends and groups, because it opens a lot more doors and it gets more um, exposure by having a diverse team like that. So I think it's really important to have the images to match that, to tell the story. And you definitely have to have it on your website. If you go click, especially as a donor, and you click and you say, well, where's the team? And you don't have pictures of who works for you it's a problem, especially in today's time. That's the, that's the bare basics. You definitely need to have your team pictures. Awesome. Any more questions? Hey, Jen, I actually have a question for you. Yeah. Um, thank you for presenting for us today. Uh, if you could, uh, what's the top three that you believe organizations should focus on when it comes to branding overall so from the photography to social media to it's so many things that you have to brand yourself on nowadays if you could kind of give a top three into getting started or directing the plan to uh evolving or growing the brand of the organization what would it be i would say first and i and i think this is with every human in every industry you have to know why you do what you do and why people should use you if you don't know that, you need to sit up underneath the tree with your little journal and you need to figure it out. Um, because if you don't know that, people can see through it. So you really have to know your why, who you are as a human, why you are set in this position to serve where you serve. I think that's the first piece. Um, I think the second piece is definitely being your authentic self and then translating that through. Um, I wear a lot of hats. Right. And I, I think that that brings diversity in who I am and how, what I can bring to the table. So I think sometimes in nonprofits, people say, this is what I do. I come to my job and I, and I run this program. No, you don't. You do more than that. Why do you do that? So really knowing that piece of it, social media is a, I, I always say, I'm like, why are they making this so hard for business owners <laughs> constantly making it? Now you have to be on LinkedIn. Now you have to be on Facebook. Now you have to be on Instagram and you have to do your newsletter and you have to do your blog and you have to be in the community and you have to run your program and you have to be the CEO. It's a lot. Um, so if you have to pick, 
I would say that you definitely be on one platform at least consistently. Some of that stuff can translate over to others. Um, but you have to be on social media because that's a certain demographic that you're going to meet and then getting in front of people. I think that being involved in UPHS is a great way to do that, that they will set you up and connect you with, with people that you can connect with and help you grow and partner. Um, so I think your why, I think social media is really a huge pick your avenue. Don't do it all. You're, you're not, a, you know, unless you have a massive team to help you do it, it it will drive you nuts. Um, and then getting a clear message on your website is probably a good space, especially for donors, especially for the people that you want to serve. They want to have clear direction on who they're working with and how to connect with you. Awesome. Thank you. Any more questions? Any questions, any comments or anything from the team? All right. Well, we're going to give you all some time back, just like true Jen. She's efficient in everything. Uh, Amber put something in the chat earlier about that. Um, but thank you all very much. Uh, we will make the presentation available. Um, if you want to connect with Jen, just reach out to Justin, uh, Jen for uh, Powell Photography. Uh, you can find her website, but just reach out to Justin and we'll make sure that we all get you, that we get you all connected. Everybody stay safe and we will see you soon.